Good day, Grade Tens. Welcome to the second lesson in Week 37, where we're going to start looking at long questions from the paper. I'm basically doing only the ones where we haven't actually had experience of before. In other words, I'm doing the new content from Term 3 and 4. So if you see questions in the exam paper from the previous content, please go look at the previous weeks where we've had control tests, and you will see those memos there. Okay, let's get started. So it says, give two ways in which the atmosphere interacts with the hydrosphere. Now, the atmosphere is your air, right? And your hydrosphere is everything to do with water. So basically, we're talking about the whole part of the water cycle. So we're looking at condensation, precipitation, um, evaporation, anything like that okay would be how the atmosphere interacts with the hydrosphere now it says name two sources of fresh water well obviously that would be your rivers and your um, your underground your potable water potable water um, and maybe some lakes but mainly your rivers and your potable water which is your underground source of water plants transpire through their stomata in their leaves during photosynthesis and the water droplets evaporate from these leaves is transpiration exothermic or endothermic and the correct answer is that it's exothermic and it, what happens is the reason that the water droplets evaporate from the leaves is actually to cool the leaves down cool the leaves down why because transpiration transpiration is exothermic cool the leaves down which means it gives off heat now it says explain why cutting down natural forests affects the water cycle well if you think about it if we cut down the natural forests then there are a couple of things that happen firstly you're not going to have this transpiration um, and if there's no transpiration there's no evaporation of the water and that means that there's no water in the air, which means that there's going to be no rain, okay? Um, which then obviously means that there will be drought, etc., etc. Another way that the cutting down the natural forest affects the water cycle, just in case you thought of it, was the fact that if we cut down the trees, and obviously we're reducing the amount of roots and the root system in the um, in the forests, so then obviously the nutrient cycle is going to be messed up totally, as well as the fact that remember that plants remove water from the soil, etc., etc. So that's another way. So when there's less root systems or less roots in the soil um, that are active, but the main one is because of this: the fact that there's no transfer, is transpiration, therefore no evaporation, therefore no rain. It says ice floats on water. Give two examples why this process ensures life on Earth. Okay, so when I asked this to a bunch of students, they gave me all these things about the fact that ice is less dense, etc., etc. It's got nothing to do with why it ex it actually allows why it helps to ensure life on Earth. Okay. Okay, the first reason is that firstly, because the ice floats in water, what it does is it insulates um, the water from outside. What that means is it keeps the water warmer. Okay, it keeps the water warmer. And because of that, the plants and the animals can grow under the water. The plants and the flesh, fish, the plants can grow and the fish can survive. Fish can survive under the water. And that's important. It also keeps a layer of air. So if you ever get stuck under um, uh, ice, you can go up really close to the surface of the ice, and there is a layer of air that you can breathe until you, you can work it out. Okay, now it says, would the melting point of water increase or decrease if the intermolecular forces were weaker? Okay, so do you agree that if the intermolecular forces were weaker, then the melting point would do what? The melting point is going to decrease, which means it's going to evaporate more easily. It's going to evaporate more easily. 
Now it says, explain your answer and how this would affect life on Earth. Well, if it evaporates more easily, then do you agree there's going to be less water to drink? There's going to be less, basically, liquid water, less liquid water, which is going to affect life on Earth drastically because we use water mainly in its liquid state for drinking and for irrigation, etc., etc. So that is huge, okay? So there's less liquid water, so it's going to affect the whole food cycle because, and the fact that we won't be able to drink it, and no drinking water. Okay, so this is quite an interesting question because it was slightly out of the box, but it's all to do with your different, your atmospheres, your hydrospheres, your biospheres, etc. So please go learn that section. Now it says, John and Paul, Paul want to know at which temperature HCl changes phase. They do an experiment and obtain the following graph which shows the cooling curve. This is the cooling curve of HCl. Use the graph to answer questions below. So now before I even start reading the questions, I look at the graph. So I've got temperature in degrees Celsius. At 110 degrees something happens and then at um, 40 minutes something drops and then there we go again. Okay, now it says write down an investigative question for this investigation. So your investigative question first of all has to end in a question mark. You, if you write written a question and you haven't put a question mark in, at the end of it, you're going to lose marks. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is you need to relate at two variables. You need to relate two variables. So it says they want to know at which temperature HCl changes phase. The investigative question would be at which temperature does HCl change phase? Question mark. See how easy that is? So it's just relating the temperature to a phase change. And remember grade tens, I can write mine out with just temp instead of temperature. You will write out the whole word. Okay. So now it says write down the independent and dependent variables. So remember that the dependent variable, okay wait, the independent variable is the one that we change and the dependent variable is the one that we measure. In other words, we measure it and dependent is dependent on the the independent is de dependent is dependent on the independent, okay? So, in other words, we want to look at, in this case, the independent variable, the one that we're changing is the temperature. So, the independent variable, independent, is the temperature, right? And the dependent variable, which is dependent on the temperature, is the phase change or the phase that the HCl is in. Right, now it says state the phase in which HCl exists during the interval 0 to 10 minutes. Okay, so here we're going from 0 to 10 minutes. So this is obviously solid and then we've got liquid. No, let's try again. Hey, okay. shame. This is obviously gas, we're cooling it down, okay, we're cooling it, it's a cooling curve. So this is gas, this is still liquid, and then this is solid, okay. So from 0 to 10 minutes, from year to year, what is it? It is a gas. Then it says, name the phase change which occurs between the interval 110 to 130 minutes. So 110 to 130 is when a liquid is becoming a solid and if that's the case what is happening we can say it's freezing or you can even say it's solidification solidification now to describe the energy changes occurring in the substance between 10 and 40 so they want the energy changes here and 40 and 110 minutes Okay, so between 10 and 40, do you agree that the temperature remains the same, but what's actually happening? Do you see that the HCl is actually changing phase from gas to liquid? So between 10 and 40 minutes, we have gas changing to liquid. So 
So what is happening? Do you agree that there we actually have a phase change because there is a reduction of energy, so it's losing energy, losing energy to the environment. Okay, and what is happening is that the reason for that is because internecular forces, uh, because it's losing energy, it allows the intermolecular forces forces to play a greater role, to play a greater role. Okay, whereas between 40 and 110, what is happening? Between 40 and 110 minutes, it is all liquid. And admittedly, admittedly, it's losing energy. And the particles are therefore slowing down. Slowing down. And therefore, they're getting ready to freeze because they are losing the average kinetic energy, but they are not really affecting the intermolecular forces at all. All right. Okay, grade 10s, join me for the next lesson where we carry on with the long questions from this paper. Have a great day.